test, test. Okay. So anything you say against you. We got a new beloved sister that we're going to meet today. Uh, I'm going to give people time. This is a new, uh, this is a new format. So um, I'm going to give people time to come in. We're going to get to know this beautiful beloved sister who I got to meet last night. She did some incredible light language. The earth moved. There was a major repercussions felt in the uh, tectonic plates underneath Siesta Key Beach with uh, both of us uh, and Greg Prescott, Morgan Lee, T.L. Guadalupe, and about 10, 12, 14 other people. If these shows resonate with you, please share as we're being suppressed as usual on Facebook and until we break away with our own site. Our independent stream, independent server, outside the constricts of the matrix uh, social media platforms, we're going to need your assistance, uh, and we do appreciate it. And thank you for all your love and support and contributions that allow us to keep doing this every day. Please share this to a page, to a group. Uh, just one time would be cool, you know, so we can uh, get the word out there. All right, so we got a few people in the house. Adina Costa, Marianne Savino. Big, big props to the Warriors, Marianne, uh, who is going into surgery, I believe, uh, in the next two or three or four days. Uh, she has conquered, again, uh, this illusion of an illness, and uh, she's kicking ass and taking names. She's a big inspiration to all of us. Uh, Linda Hickton, uh, who else is in here? Robert Orth, always uh, putting out some really good stuff that I steal every now and then. Naveen's good to see you. Lynn True, Pia Holland, Sue Baxter Fitz, Eric Peterson. We met last night. Yeah, and Cooley Portel. All right. We got 29 people in the house. Uh, this is our first Soul Speaks 5D since we last talked to La Laura Eisenhower a few days ago before we met uh, left Arkansas. And so, and as a normal Soulogy style, this is spontaneous, intuitive, creative, imaginative, and depending on what we do or talk about, it might be a little courageous. <laughs> but based on the private conversation we had, this could be a very colorful episode of Soul Speaks 5D. So I, uh, we have a talking stick today. We have a new format. It's a directional microphone, so we're going to pass it back and forth. So that'll make for an easy uh, segue back and forth. Uh, and this is uh, Carrie Ann Sanders is her name on Facebook, but she's Quirky Cosmo. Yeah which is a Facebook page with well over 3,000 likes. I was checking it out today. She's got some good stuff. We're here. She's here in the uh, Sarasota, Florida area, and uh, she works and collaborates with Greg Prescott, and uh, that ought to tell you something. <laughs> so hello, BP Jewel. Maybe we'll see you in Kansas City soon. Um, but anyway, so we got a new friend. We met her last night. She did some incredible light language and uh, really uh, got the blood flowing for everybody that was there at the tree at Siesta Key Beach in the middle of nowhere, <laughs> but we found it. Uh, Australia, it's an Australian pine. Oh, it's an Australian pine. It's an Australian pine. So now, the, the thing is, uh, we've not really had a discussion. We talked a little bit, and so we're just going to do what we normally do, and we're just going to have a conversation in front of our brothers and sisters. Uh, so Quirky Cosmo, uh, I want to talk about that in a minute, but first of all, uh, we talked about this a little bit, uh, when did you wake up? How did you wake up? And anything you want to add to it? Hello. Thank you guys, everybody in the chats for joining. People that watch the replay, thanks for joining, liking, and being here, present in this moment. Um, my journey started in, well, consciously started in March of 2017, along with a whole wave, gamma, of <laughs> gamma wave of star seeds and you know ancient beings and send and masters whatever you like to call yourself light workers um but my my start mine started when my mom passed in uh october of 2016 and then i got a phone call from a medium in january who my mom apparently was just nagging at for her to reach out to me and so uh, i listened to the medium and then i went to youtube and i found astrology um what is it called tarot reading and it led me to astrology and that led me to a whole bunch of other awakenings and events and conspiracy theory, you know, going down every rabbit hole I could find. And then in June um, of 2017, my day spot took a pew and my whole life went upside down. Pluto had fun with me and we moved across country 
to Sarasota. Um, I actually reached out to Greg within 5D and a whole other chain of events unfolded, and here I am. <laughs> right? That was a good rundown. So it sounds like she had a, a condensed version of what uh, a lot of people did that have been on the show uh, that have told their stories in 1,700 episodes. Uh, they went through a succession, uh, successive uh, traumatic uh, timeline <laughs> where there was one trauma after another and uh sometimes and most of the time it did involve losing people and that type of thing one way or the other uh but it sounds like she uh went at warp speed and a lot of people are doing that now and that's why we love doing this show is because these stories actually carry the highest code uh exchange transmission downloads channelings and activations from us from the one-on-one -on -one having a conversation with no bullshit and no filters and no fucking veils and yes todd's going to throw some f-bombs today because we need to ramp this thing up we need to step up one thing about the ascension is that it's not going to allow anyone to hide anymore so for those of you who've been in the background we understand that many people have uh, have stepped up on this show but it's really, really important for us to step up. And if that means just turn it on your phone and start doing a live and talking about anything, just let it be the truth. It doesn't even matter what the subject is. It will light people up soul to soul. Now, I want to go back to uh, this beautiful sister and talk about a little bit uh, about her journey. And But the, my first question is going to be, what is Quirky Cosmo and how did you come up with it? Well, um Quirky is my personality. I am anything but uh, your normal being. I am different. I am outsp outspoken, honest, to the point. I carry a lot of Capricorn energy, so I'm uh, blunt. Um, and it's just, you know, I like to throw a cork into people. I like to just give them a spin. You know, whenever you go get your wine, you get the cork, you're uncorking it, you're spinning it, and you're popping it, popping their tops. I'm a trigger. You know, if it's not my words and it's the way that I present myself or whatever, it, whatever it was, a corky came to me and I was like looking for synonyms that would explain my unique, I was like unique Cosmo. Cause I was also a hairstylist for, uh, well now it's been 11 years, but at the time I was a hairstylist for nine years. And so I was like, and I was just diving into astrology and starseed astrology, quantum astrology. And I was like, Cosmos, I was like, that just that just goes good. And then I was like, Corky Cosmo. I was like, that's it. And so that's where my name came from. And, you know, in the stars, of the stars. And here we are. Right on. Did you have any uh, – I'm going to make sure I remember the second question. I'm cataloging it back there. Okay, I got it. It has to do with astrology. Okay. But before we get there, uh, did you have any specific faces of the universe that came to you and spoke to you or guided you or directed you? Or did you just have this uh, succession of traumas that just kind of put you in that universal isolation where it was just you and the universe and the whole dialogue started? Yeah, um, I went through, there was no faces that came to me, no. Um, it, well, there was, I was, <laughs> I would just hibernate in my garage and before my, my day spa went down and I was watching astrology, smoking pot, you know, doing the normal uh, Southern California. I do have my medical marijuana license as well. Just putting that out there. I did. And I was just relaxing and watching astrology and then just being guided and through the, through like, I was like, oh shit. I was like, do you, I was telling my husband, I said, do you remember that? Do you remember that? I was like, look, look here. It's there. It's there. It's there. It's like, do -do 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 -do. I was like a Computer. So as soon as I turned on, it was just like everything that I was watching was like doom, 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 doom. It was puzzle pieces were being put together. And then um, I was, I had just did like a thoth, which now I know it, this is the start of my Luciferian awakening. And um, I did a, you know, um, thoth, like the halls of Amente, like you make a circle around you and you call into all the halls of Amente. And then I went, after I finished that, I went onto my my patio and I was smoking a cigarette. I was a smoker at the time and I was sitting on the back patio and I had like this 14, 16 foot, 20 foot. It was huge. Um, it was an Indian reptilian dressed in headgear, like headdress. It was uh, like an Indian reptilian in headdress. And I was in the Temescal, well, Temecula Valley. So it's the Temescal Indian Valley where there was a lot, there was a huge um, Indian massacre that's on record. And it was just one of where the first settlers, uh, one of the first, um, what are they called? Churches. They had like all that set up there. So yeah, anyways, it was, it was a really huge event. So it scared the shit out of me seeing that. So I turned that off again, but then I just started, you know, talking to the stars and I had, um, I was on my backyard again 
and I'm very um, elementally and attuned with nature itself. I hear it, feel it, know telepathic with with nature. And you know, um, when I was out there, the my my roses were talking to me, or my bougainvilleas were talking to me. And but I was like aurora borealis. It's like no, you're bougainvilleas. What the fuck is that? <laughs> and, and so I was like, I don't know. I went in the house and I asked my husband, I was like, uh, what is Aurora, what's Aurora, Aurora, what's the Borealis? And he's like, he pulls out his phone and he like pops up with the sky map and he's like, you know, the crown that's above, you know, your head. I was like, oh my God, the stars are talking to me now. And so that was the beginning of like, and that was really, in, it was like April, May. It was really quick, really rapid, all this happening and um, everything else. Just the trees started talking to me. I was out there eating a bowl of cereal, Lucky Charms, and the and the trees were like swaying. My na- my neighbor's fruit tree like leaned over, like, here, eat me. And I'm like, oh, so you're saying my Lucky Charms aren't good enough anymore? <laughs> so it was, it was a strain of events that, um, you know, I, there wasn't any one being at all. It's been my higher source self. And then it's been, you know, just the, the blips of, of epiphany and downloads or streamline of the radio frequency waves that are, you know, coming in through the plasma light ejections from the the sun and, you know, the the astrological alignments, but not in the sense that everybody like deems astrology and it's controlling. It's not. It's uh, it's the way that your psyche is attuned to these frequencies and, and these energetics from the stars, the constellations, and also the mythology that you're playing out. Like, you know, they talk about the archetypes. Well, that's the myths. You know, what myth are you? What multitude of myths are you playing out? And how did that, like, what, what are you here to clear out? And that's really how your awakening plays. Like, not everybody has a traumatic event. Some people come in, they're, you know, born awake or they have like this beautiful like connection with spirit and they take maybe the you know the yoga approach which is the mind body spirit you know and they they go through like this deep healing of like a lifetime not everybody is just like bam you know you were asleep and here you are now you're awake that's a, that's the trauma you know and that's it's a beautiful way it's to pull you straight out but it, it definitely it it tests your psyche it tests your and that's where a lot of people um you know they commit suicide or they you know think that they're losing their mind and they get on even more drugs so Mm. it's a very it's a very testy awakening so it's for the strong i would say definitely i firmly believe that i have said many times we're all valiant souls courageous souls we all chose to come here and uh, don't give up because we've come all this way uh, not to give up now. I mean, we can stick this out now. And if you and you decide to, you know, exit stage left, that's okay too. But let's see what we can do, man. Let's see what we can make happen. I'm always doing this because I want to expand. I want to learn more. I've never heard of a Luciferian awakening. So I want to know what that is. And I also want to talk about astrology a little bit uh, and other components uh, that are in our experience that might be somewhat esoteric or mysterious or whatever. And what type of hold or what type of role that they have. So we're just going to run with it. But what is a Luciferian awakening? Is that what you called it? Yeah, it's, um, it's, it's just a reference to, you know, being, uh, you come through, a, you go through an awakening, but you go through a dark state of awakening where you're, you're, into, you're automatically introduced to the lower vibrational frequencies. So you're, you're tapping into the satanic or overlaid templates that are within your genetic, uh, your, your DNA structure. Okay. So we have these, these over, I call them overlays. You can call them templates. Um, or you can call them, um, you know, hexes, people call them hexes there, but they're, they're to keep your consciousness within your DNA structure, the vibrational frequency of your, of your DNA at a lower vibration. And in order to release them quickly, which would be like the cabal, the tense, the, the tense fear tree of life. That's the false tree of life. That's the, that's the, uh, the thought or the, um, tense fear it keeps you into the matrix. It's not the real, it's not the real tree of life. It's the cabal. It's, you know, the dark trying to be like, Oh, well here, here, stay in the tense sphere. T- stay, stay limited. You're not able to ascend to a certain frequency because you're locked into these teachings. So you're, you're, you're automatically thrown into the 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 old occult or like the Illuminati's teachings, and so you're awakening through the darkness, mm. and that's a Luciferian awakening. So coming up from the dark into the light, mm. so quintessentially. Mm. Yeah, I can relate to that, and I have absolutely uh, done that. Uh, as a lot of people know, years ago, eight years ago, seven, six years ago, and even uh, five years ago, four years ago, whatever. But I went really, really deep, and uh, I don't really, still don't understand 
what I do understand what she's saying with the template or the overlay. Overlay sounds right to me. Um, but I still think that we created all of this, and uh, it's a perfect design, and whatever path you take is the one that you choose, you know. Uh, so, you know, I think it's interesting, too, because so much of this trip now, as we go into, as we're in 2020 now, you know, really is accentuating uh, self-empowerment or disempowerment. And I think some of the things that got us to this point uh, were self-empowering or at least enlightening or expansive. Uh, but at some point, what got you to this point doesn't necessarily get you to the next one. And so that's kind of where I'm at, watching everything in the community, people being really stuck on I channel this or I have this skill or I have this ability. I do believe we all have pieces of the puzzle. But at the same time, I think these attachments might be getting the best of us because they're creating separation in the community. And if they're going to create separation in the community, it's going to continue further out than that, you know, from our further out from our closest circle. So I'd like to learn a little bit more about astrology. Everybody knows that I'm not a typical light worker. I don't know anything about chakras much and astrology and all that. Uh, but I do think that in the sponta uh, spontaneous moment, that we can we can learn some things that and and have an opportunity to do it in a much more expansive way. To know what your take is on astrology, I'm just going to kind of give you what I know because I'm a, very much a layman. I see the astrology, the stars, planetary alignments, and all that very significant. I I, I say there's no time but seasons in this universal uh, journey that we have, this infinite journey that we have. Um, but at the same time, I am not going to give my power away to the fucking moon or the sun, all respect, term of endearment, when I use the F word, I'm not giving my power away to anything, no matter what it is, whether it's physical or non-physical. And I've seen Jesus in my room, I've seen uh, Merlin, I've seen dragons and all that, and that's only to give you some backdrop. All I'm trying to say is somebody needs to prove to me that there is, uh, you know, that there is uh, a system or a process, a guidance system, a GPS that is foolproof or I'm going to continue to say to thine own self be true. I do believe astrology uh, carries more weight than anything and everything, philosophies, religions, schools of thought, and all that, because it is, it is there. It's always on time. And the evidence from the apparent uh, influences that it has on us, whether it be something in conjunction or something in retrograde or whatever the case is, or the moon, you know, being full. It, it has the influences, and, and that has been recorded since, you know, at least the history that they've shown us. So can you give us a backdrop on what you know about astrology? Because I know what you were talking about earlier before we started the show is a little bit different than what I've been hearing. Yes. So I have a, I have a different take on astrology than a lot of people, not saying everybody. Um, I do have a, a channel where people, I have people that agree or are on the same page or it resonates with them as well. But I'm the psychology, and I'm just going to – I'm going to slow down here and really start from a, an, an understanding of this. So we are the, the body of, of the sentient being in which we reside, okay? We are the creation in play, and you're an aspect of source God consciousness on this physical plane and in this reality playing your part. We all do have pieces to the puzzle. Now, what astrology does in my perspective and I'm not here to wage a debate with anybody. You have your beliefs and I have mine, okay? So perspectively, the astrology is obviously where we're, you know, it's the mathematics and the timing, okay? It's the, it's the cogs. It's the cogs in the consciousness and how they play out. But it, they've been attuned. So the planets, they have their own, they're sentient beings as well. They have their own consciousness. They have their abilities. They have progressed into the Vishnu um, state of consciousness, which is the planetary state of consciousness. And then there's a solar logos above that, which are the, the constellations. And they are ex sentient beings um, as well with a larger, uh, with their own solar systems and galaxies and universes and all that within. So, you know, it, it is like, it's not a hierarchy, but it's like, it's an understanding of where the energetics are coming from, right? And so within astrology, what you're looking at within your natal chart, yes, there's some basic bullshit <laughs> with your personality and your sun sign and your moon and your ascendant. But this is, this is an, an, an understanding of like this 
Taurus is where your personality began and your ascendant is where, you know, you're ascending to become. It is your essence and what you are to, to, to grow and to maturate into. And your moon is how you're receiving. So the moon is a false structure. It's a false structure. It's been utilized. It has a negative polarity and a positive polarity. And if you're tuned to the negative polarity, then you're going to be attuned to the energetics that are being frequency uh, driven into this matrix, into the lower densities and consciousness. And if you are attuned to the uh, bare mineral of your vibrational signature within your DNA, then you're going to be a little drone rocking around doing exactly what your natal chart tells you to do because that's what it is. It tells you what you can do and what you are doing, okay? And like in, in its own way, there's always that sense of free will. That's where you can change it and you become, and you become, you ascend, you become that disciple to, you know, to the, um, uh, to your ascended master, okay? But it quintessentially, you are energetically stamped, okay, through the zodiac, through the planets and through the constellations. These make up your states of consciousness, they make up your mythology, they make up in the way your psyche works, and it also tells you your purpose in which you, like, you're to, uh, to aspire to, like your celestial, your celestial starseed energetics, that is your aspiration, that is the energy, your supernatural innate abilities that you came here to unleash, to unfold, and you're also healing, you chose to heal that slice of the universe. You chose to heal that aspect of of, of the of our universe okay so you're healing that that mythology so if you've got more Lyran you've got Syrian you've got Orion you've got Pleiades there was wars there's galactic wars okay and these are sentient beings so you're you're stamped with a little bit of their consciousness right or a lot of bit of their consciousness but then that's also for you to you know whenever you're born right to live out those myths live out those stories and then to transcend them as a conduit of light source energy you transcend that energy through your presence through your being through your perseverance through it right so it transcends that story here on earth earth is a is a place for us all 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 star seeds all sentient beings, celestial beings, to be here to to heal the genome, to heal your genetic coding, and it was you know this this has been taken over by a dark agenda by a fallen angelics, okay, and so we had to it, we had a harder time with getting along, and we were playing out the slave system, we were playing out the lower frequency octaves that the the fallen angelics or dark agenda, you know whatever negative negative alien agenda has had us doing, and they've stayed with the frequency control. Okay, but now we've elevated in consciousness. It's all a divine order. It's all in perfect timing. And I do go into that, and I have a, a recent episode on my channel. It's called um, the Pangaean um, Awakening and the Seventh Root Race. And so we are the Pangaean. Um, we're the seventh root race, and that is due to our frequency, our consciousness, choosing to elevate from the ashes of the sixth root race, which would be the Trevian root race, which represents the... Um, astral uh, realm, so the emotional realm of humanity. So in the sense of this sentient being, whenever she descended her consciousness into physical form, right? So it goes through stages of her consciousness descending. So from the monadic to the, at the atomic to the buddhic to the casual body to the mental plane to the astral plane and then into the physical. And that explains the first root race, the Hyperborean race, the second root race, which is the... Um, not the hyperborean, the polarian's the first root race, the hyperborean's the second root race, then you have the third root race, which is the Lumerian, the fourth root race, which is the Atlantis, the fifth root race, which is the Aryan, the sixth root race, which is the Trevian, and then now we are the seventh root race, which is just seated in the 1950s. A couple in the 1942 is what I got early, uh, a couple days ago. There was a few that came in in 1942 to start seeding the um, seventh root race, which is the Pangaean, uh, the, the seventh, the physical embodiment of the divine herself, itself, the divine masculine and feminine in body. And that took a state of consciousness that in which star seed light workers have been ascending into through their journey. And that's where we are, right? But that all plays into your, your celestial alignments and what planets are in your chart, how they're playing out for you in your chart. And, you know, your moon again is your receiver. So it's, how are you receiving? You know, my moon is in Capricorn. So I, you know, I'm, I'm, 
have that, you know, to the point bluntness. I am, you know, the t structured Saturnian energy, right? So I, that my, my moon was very, um, I was very droned. Okay. Droned meaning in seated deep into that matrix that because it's a Saturnian uh, matrix, right? This is the Saturn's box. This is the the cube, okay? Metatron's cube, which is you know they're using the energy of Saturn to control that to control the the frequency, right? Because that's a sentient being, you know, and that gave its choice to be utilized in a lower state of consciousness. But once you've ascended yourself and you've become right? You've gone through your maturation, your life experiences, your Saturn return, your Chiron return, whatever it might be for you, your life experiences, you mature in consciousness and you allow for the higher octave frequency of these sentient beings, whether it be a planet or, uh, you know, um, uh, solar logos, which would be constellation, tapping into the higher consciousness. They all have levels of consciousness just as you do and frequency in which they omit. And so we're tapping into these higher frequencies of the planets. And that is how we're changing and within our cellular structure because the the more you go up in your vibration and your consciousness, then you're tapping into these higher states within your own chart. And that puts you into your North Node, your true Dharma destiny, okay? And mine is at the Pleiades, and it's at Alcyon, which had been hijacked. Alcyon is, is a fallen, it's it's a fallen, um, you know, sister. Alcyon and Pleiades. Pleiades, yeah, it's fallen, and I'm going to get all kinds of backlash on this one, too. Check out the Ashiana Dean teachings. It's a lot of hidden teachings that have been suppressed, and they've been ridiculed and damned for their expression, but there's so much There's so much um, work that, that she has brought through with the Guardian Alliance. Um, it's a living transmission. I also work with the Gene Keys, Gene, G-E-N-E, -E, Keys, which is uh, by Richard Rudd, okay, and this is, well, let me get it in the camera right here. Now this is their older book, so it's a purple one now, but this is the Gene Keys, which is a living transmission. Richard Rudd, he was a student of Ra, a student of human design and of the uh, Corpus Christi, which is the body of light. <laughs> this is so funny enough, he's from Corpus Christi, the body of Christ, right? So this is your Merkaba. So these are the, the celestial teachings and also integrates the I Ching in there and your your physiology so it has everything to do with the nadis or the meridians and the body and your human design and the psychology and the energetics now he doesn't necessarily connect um, the energy as i as i have been explaining it to you guys this is what i do uh, one of my passions is to be a synergizer so i find all of these modalities and i start seeing where the storylines uh, and the truth are coming in and i put it together I'm like oh this piece and then that piece and so i, I synergize these energies and i'm i and i'm explaining the story through the gene keys quintessentially because that's the unfolding of the consciousness the gene keys are the psychology of your dna and so as we unfold in this awakening process in this alignment in this new in this new state of presence, divine presence in our in our source self, you know, and coming into that power, you know, that's that's so I I I that's my that's what I like to do and my passion is to work with the gene keys and esoteric astrology. And so as far as astrology, it's more so, yes, you can look at it from a very basic level, which is which would be your horoscope and, you know, how do you connect on your sinistry and, you know, is this the right dude for you or are you going to, is this a good time for you to invest and all this stuff. That's very, that's, that's the lower, that's the lower, um, of your, of your consciousness. And so whenever you, open up and you ascend to the higher states and then that's whenever you can really utilize astrology to transcend and bring in technologies and higher informations from your source self and that is another thing that i go on about is not channeling you are no need to put your your omnipresence your connection your celestial self with any other body off this planet like you are everything you are enough. Your word is enough. What your message is, is enough. It doesn't need to come stamped with anybody else's pretty name, a, a dead person or, or a loved one or one of our ancient masters or any of that. It doesn't need to have any pretty bows and whistles added to it. You are enough. You are incarnated here. If they were needed, they would be incarnated, but you are. And that makes you good enough. 
And that's what it's about. It's about stepping into your divinity, your divine masculine, your divine feminine, and really taking what you brought onto this planet, those higher energetics, those star scene alignments, those planetary placements in the zodiac and, and utilizing your energy body your Merkaba in the proper way, proper form, formats, which there is, there are proper teachings. And these are the Cathara uh, spiritual healing guides that have been brought through, in my perspective, you can have yours, in my perspective, which have been brought through from the Ashiana Dean team and the Guardian Alliance, okay, which are uh, sentient beings, solar logo. So you're looking at constellations that have pulled themselves together, massive massive sentient beings, okay, that have pulled themselves together to allow for transmissions to come onto this planet so that our universe wouldn't be infiltrated or infested and then get infested into the rest of the, the multiverses, okay? And so that is, I think, where I can pass the mic for a moment. <laughs> that was excellent. I picked up a lot of stuff from there. I picked up uh, that, uh, first of all, Anything external, be it, it, well, it's all alive. It's all sentient. Um, you know, from what she's saying, too, some of these things, such as the moon, okay, such as Saturn, such as whatever, uh, there's an accessibility through their own lower consciousness that has either been hijacked or whatever directed towards us. The bottom line is we still connected to that that entity that energy complex whatever it is um and but the flip side of it is that there is uh, they they are uh composed uh in the same manner that we are and uh we are the whole universal i mean so we can access the higher attributes if you will uh of these of these uh, influences that we've had um the other thing i pick up from her too is the whole astrology thing uh at more than just face value um uh, I could see it makes total sense to me that like before we stepped into this numerical sacred geometric uh, game that we chose or were given a set of numbers uh, that correlates with a certain characteristics, a certain uh, trajectories. Uh, and I love what she says too about this is what's happening and this is what's available to you, you know, in this house, in this birth date, whatever the case may be. So I think that's a really good explanation. I also like the fact that she talks about, in general, boldly, here's where I'm coming from. This is what I'm, uh, this is what I'm getting. This is what I align with. And you may not. But, but we all know that one of the main things that has woke us up, and she talked about it uh, in her journey 2017, this whole thing about this information about disclosure, or secret space, or or Illuminati, or Cabal. This is information. It's information to wake us up to who we are, which takes me to the next uh, point of the conversation. For me, is, uh, you know, I'm looking at this whole thing, how fast it's changed over the last few years, especially over the last uh, year, uh, 2019, and now 2020, which is moving like at warp speed, because I think 2020, even though it's only been, what, uh, 17 days, it's like 2019... <laughs> 2019, uh, you know, times three already. But, you know, I'm almost getting to the point now where I'm saying, you know, when we become aware, how much more is there to do after that? It's almost like when we become aware, we have an open mind and say, you know what? That's possible. Uh, the fallen angel story is possible. Uh, Jesus coming down uh, from the sky in a chariot blowing smoke rings out his ass to save us is possible. Everything is possible. Anything that anyone's imagined is possible. You know, how do we not know that anything that's been thought about is not a timeline that we haven't lived on and participated on? I mean, all this stuff, but I love what she says about, and I'm not knocking anybody, because I walked into this game several years ago, and it was just Todd in the universe. Now, there were Yeshua and Magdalene and spirit guides and ascendants and stuff like that. But I, but I always had the most trust in myself, in, in the universal voice that was in alignment with my, my real voice, you know, that, was, that I could only speak to, that I could only hear, that I could only explain. It doesn't need to be talked about to anybody else. But what I'm trying to say is I think we've moved into, an, uh, uh, we've moved into a part of our journey where at a minimum everything is available 
in proportion to how open your mind is. You know, two or three nights ago, when Morgan and I put our hands together as we do every night when we go to bed, uh, if she normally has her eyes closed, I normally have mine open, and I had mine closed, <laughs> which was weird, and she had hers open. She goes, uh, are your eyes open? I said, no. <clears throat> she goes, you might want to open them. The room filled up with our team, our teams, whatever. Some of these, some of these uh, energies, some of these aspects of me were not like attractive. They were like scary, you know, but I, I saw them and uh, the ones that were more uh, appealing to the eye <laughs> as the same. And I'm not trying to say this to, to make myself different from anybody. What I'm trying to say is I understand and have really understood since about mid-2016 that I am all aspects of the universe, all aspects of dark, all aspects of light. That's why I personally have a somewhat of a challenge when it comes to people over-talking about the Illuminati and the Cabal and the NAA and all that stuff. I understand it. I get it. But I don't think for one second that it's separate from me. I can't. How the hell can I be uh, everything this universe is if I am separating myself or disassociating myself from any aspect of the universe. Now, where do I really take this down uh, for me on a personal level? Because you know what Sology, the hashtag is, I am soul, and the second one is I, the human is the hero. Uh, let me rephrase it. The human is the fucking hero. Okay, and what that means is, is that nothing happens if you're going to divorce yourself from any aspect of the universe, but nothing is going to happen at all if you divorce yourself from any aspect of the human we're here in this body, in this, this, this skin suit, whatever you want to call it, bag of bones and blood. You know, we're here for a reason. Why are we 99% of the time conscious here with 1% of our consciousness? When 99% of our consciousness is all out there, yet we're always here. There's a reason for that. Do not underestimate the power of one unique and equal soul. Do not underestimate what she talked about at the top of the show, which is these personal transformations, these, these, this information and code that's given to us and light that's given to us from the universal, from the cosmos, the, the design of it. You know, what's the importance of it? It's not just to tell us this and to tell us what's available. It's for us to transform because when we transform, this is not a Todd correction. Or, you know what I mean? This isn't a quirky cosmo uh, correction. This isn't even an Earth correction. This is, a, this is beyond a solar system correction. This is beyond a galaxy correction. This is a correction and alignment that is being affected by an, our internal expansion across all timelines and all dimensions. And that's the bottom fucking line, man. I'm not saying that we don't need to talk about this and we don't need to talk about that. But let's shit or get off the pot. You know what I mean? Right. It's time to step up, and I don't care who you are. I understand it's been a tough road. All of our pain is, purport, is, is the same, proportionate to our life experience. Stand up and be counted. That's what this universe needs, and that's what is going to happen no matter what, because this shit's going down. Let go or be dragged. So my, my, my question is... My, my, my question is, um, how much, n not, I mean, now I'm speaking in present time, yeah. present spaceless space and timeless time <laughs> that we're in, uh, how much more do we need to jump into this from a cognitive level, from a rationale, from a substantiation level, uh, even from a research level, once we get to a point of awareness, your journey is fresh and you're blunt. You know, and so, like, do you ever just say, I get that, and you move on, or I get this download, and I move on, I don't need to know what it is, I'm just, I'm just going to go out there and start kicking ass and taking names in a wider expanse, you know, something like that, does that make sense? Yeah. No, I do that all the time. Just check out my channel. <laughs> I'm so in the now moment, like, oh, this just came in. And even though, it, you know, it was not. So here, in, in re reference to that, is we go through these experiences, and, you know, we'll get thrown into, like, I had my Ashiana Dean um, awareness just this December. And I, even though I was giving the manuals, the Cathara manuals, over the summer, I was sidetracked, you know, um, and, and it put it off any of it until, uh, I was guided back to it in December. And so, and I was, then I was given the Ashana Dean, uh, interview, 
videos and like came into the awareness of all of this um, dark agenda and like the galactic, you know, all the galactic wars and all that stuff. And um, so that wasn't really a big part of my journey in the beginning. It was knowing myself and, and stuff like that. But you know, but still going through all of these rabbit holes, what they do is what I was talking about earlier with these overlays and templates, you must go through this darkness in order to know thyself, to become the light. And it's also to go into the deepest core um, of your of your overlays and your structures, your cellular structures, your memory, and you're, you're shifting the gears and you're bringing light to those memories, those situations, those timelines, those realities, those probabilities. And you're going in and just the awareness of these probabilities, these timelines, right? You're collapsing it. But it's also giving you the memory, the cellular memory ignition that you need to restructure the patterning, the belief patterning or the structure within the, the genome, the genetic structure. Structuring, okay, within your cellular vibration. So it's the same thing that you were talking about. You know, these experiences, whether it doesn't it doesn't matter what it was, it's over and quit giving it so much story. You don't need your like we were on the beach and that wasn't even you I was talking to about this last night, but these are stories. You need to stop telling yourself these stories and move on from them, create new ones. That's what we need to do. That's what we're here to once you have a certain level of awareness, it's to step into the creator energy and to start creating your reality. It's not about, well, what this is my story this is what happened as like you know Todd was asking me like a quick you know asked me about my about my awakening and I just like came through really really quick I was like this 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 and that and he's like well that was a really quick rundown it's because I don't want to continue to tell the same blase story anymore because honestly it doesn't matter it's in the past you know Rafiki would hit me in the head and go what does it matter it's in the past you know so we can learn from it and move on. And that's what I'm doing and it's what a lot of us are here to do. And it's to create heaven on earth through, but it's also to have an awareness that yes, we are all oneness, oneness consciousness within this the greater body of Gaia Sophia Terra uh, herself. But at the same time, understanding that there, this is still polarity, there is still, there is still darkness, and they are not outside of me. They are a shadow representation of me. But at the same time, I don't have to be a part of it, and I don't have to keep talking about it and bringing it into my life. I can absorb it, not absorb it, observe it, see it, non-attachment. Don't attach to it, and create around it. Essentially, when there's enough light, okay, over like enough. Enough people surrounding this darkness, it puts out. It's like whenever you have a candle in the lid, the, the one candle is burning, right? And you take the candle lid and you put it on top, it smothers it. We're here to smother, okay? We're here to smolder it out with love and appreciation, but not to be not to be blindsided into their teaching. So if the teachings, you know, these the the ten sphere Kabbalah, the tree of life, the the hall the halls of not the halls of Minty, the uh, Thoth teachings, those are all dark teachings. They're readily at your service. They're readily at your service for you so that you can be guided into the false matrix. This new earth, hashtag new earth, that's a phantom earth, okay, that is the harvesting station. You can think of Monsters, Inc. I talk about this on my channel. You think about Monsters, Inc. and how the monsters are using fear to scare people, to fit the, the children, which we are, the children. They are the monsters. Hello. This is playing out. Playing, this is disclosure for them. And they're using our energy and they're putting into a container and they're using that energy, our quantum, to light their city. Okay, and then the, and and then the people like, well, I'm not afraid of the dark, so they can't they can't scare kids as much anymore, right? Because they're not afraid anymore. They've watched so many movies, they lost sensitivity because that's what they do. They're trying to do is they're trying to breed out our sensitivity. That's why technology is it's right here. Oh, it's instant, instant, instant. I got to feel and pornography and all of that. It's to have that instant gratification and to have the sense of numbness. So instead of having fear, the monsters started using laughter. Well, if we can make them laugh. Then we can take their energy too, so we can entertain them and make them believe that nothing's wrong, that they're, you know, everything's love and light. They're going to be clueless and they're going to go walk right into a, a harvesting matrix, which would be the new earth. You are the new earth. We are going nowhere. There is no split like that. It's a split in consciousness, and we're moving up in density consciousness within the planet's consciousness herself. There are three lower consciousnesses, and that is called that is called mass, or that is called the first level of consciousness, which is density one, and it's her chakras, her chakras, one, two, and three. We are bouncing. We're taking the solar plexus, which we just had Australia on. We have Australia on fire. We have the Luru. We have the you know this is with the 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 Saturn and the Pluto and the Sun 
and Mercury and Ceres, which is an asteroid of birthing. It's the birthing asteroid and harvesting and giving. So giving birth to a new structure. And this is where it talks about in Revelations this that God will be walking us with us for a thousand years. That's the divine spirit. That's the divine in body in this avatar that is you embodied the divinity that you are on this planet and here to bring balance and justice to the world so they have a thousand years in which the guardian alliance is holding the halls of amente basically the stargates to exit the planet in a in a loving um ascension manner instead of getting stuck into the lower matrix uh con like constructs for the false light reincarnation wheel okay so they're holding that for 900 years that goes along with the biblical teachings okay um or ancient ancient even hopis talk about this the split in the mind and the heart so you're following this this consciousness are you going to follow the linear what you've been told the mind believe programming subconscious programming or are you going to go with your heart and you're going to evolve and you're going to have the heart mind cohesion and with the solar plexus so that solar plexus energy activation pushes us boom and where the heart is the higher is the higher consciousness of, of the solar plexus, right? And so that is us coming into full oneness, a consciousness and awareness, so that we are moving from the the first density chakra one, two, and three into the second density, which is chakra four, five, and six within the true twelve sphere um, tree of of life or Merkaba or Kathara grid, your, your true 12 strand, um, angelic human blueprint. Okay. This is the truth. It's not the 10 sphere. There's 12. Okay. And so in the second density, which is the semi etheric density is where we're, we are at, we are moving our, 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 our bodies from being a dense mass, all physical to a semi etheric light body quantum. Okay quantum abilities in that semi-theric um, density, which is where we're having the 4D, 5D, even six-dimensional consciousness right here in this now present moment all around us in the living sentient beings and stuff. So, yeah. So that's what, that is where we're at. This is what we're, we're experiencing. And there is a, a, a a no fuckness. You you've got to see this. You've got to have like no fucks given. You got to go balls to the wall into this, and you have to trust. You have to trust that you know it may not seem easy. You're gonna have to make decisions. You're gonna have to let. You'll have to let go of beliefs that you know you thought were right. And it, 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 it I, I was following false law like myself, you know. But I'm not gonna sit here and have a spiritual ego and be like, okay, well I've got new proof. So, but I'm going to still work with the old. No, I see where I'm at and, and I, and I move forward, grow. And I, I admit like where I'm at, you know, and, and move from there. It's called growth and you don't get stuck. You just see it and you move on. And so if I'm given new information and it resonates with me on a very deep level that I'm moved and compelled to believe me, I'll be the first person to jump on and be like, look, Hey, you know what? This is where I was yesterday. I'm not there today. I've changed my mind. And you know what? I'm okay with it. If you're not okay with it, maybe you should sit with that. Cause that's not my problem. I got three things to add to that. Okay. I'm trying to stay with her, man. She talks faster than I do. Uh, the first thing I want to say is this is just my own rule of the road that, you know, we, I have to stay open to everything. Uh, for me to ascend, if that's even a word, uh, I have to be open to the fact that anything and everything is potentially a program. You know, anything and everything carries the polarities in this trip for me. And so I can become attached. I can uh, go into judgment, resistance. Um, you know, that's the part of me that I can't deny. Uh, I try to break this down for myself into my, my interactions with other people. Uh, I received an overture today from somebody who's been a fucking asshole to me. Okay. Behind the scenes, you know, now, Todd, the higher levels, said, okay, I'm not going to say anything to this person. Uh, but they made an overture to me. And it doesn't resonate with me. And I'm okay with that, okay? I know that's me. I know that I set it up. I know that there's something I need to gain from it. I know I need to go into alignment. But it doesn't mean I need to kiss their ass. And it doesn't mean that I need to compromise myself. So because 
because of all these intricacies and all these explanations and all these schools of thought and all these histories, who the fuck did all this? We did. We did. So it doesn't matter if you play connect the dots and it goes to this planet or this multiverse or this galaxy or this divine essence or this monad. It doesn't matter. We're not, we, we're, we're most served by staying present in the part of us that we've been trying to get away from the whole time. We're like a dog chasing its tail, you know, and we finally bit ourselves in the ass and goes, oh, it was me all along. You know, that's the point that I get from her. her. It's like, you know what? This is all great and it can get a little complicated, but the own your shift. Just own it. Bone it, you know. Bone it, and uh, you know what I mean by that. Now, we are in this thing. It's moving very fast. Everything gets amplified and enhanced, and we move into these savior frequencies. What's the difference between Todd at five years old in the Catholic Church or Todd at 15 getting his soul saved by giving his soul to Jesus or his life to Jesus at 15 or Todd waking up uh, on ayahuasca at 21 and saying, oh, there's a whole other thing going on out here or whatever different levels that we've all had. The bottom line is we are that. I am the I am am, period. I am fucking soul. I am that, period. And where is my heaven? And where is my nirvana? Where is my creation? Right here, right now. Not over there, not back there, but right here. And what's happening to, to me and what I'm watching people do if they can let go of the restrictions of resistance and judgment and attachment, okay? They can let go of this stuff because let me tell you something. Judgment, uh, resistance, attachment, Okay, let's say I've got any of those or all of those towards her. That ain't got nothing to do with her. If I got a problem, if I'm uncomfortable, it ain't got nothing to do with nobody. I need to have the fucking balls to say, you know what? It ain't your deal. Contemplation you, time. <laughs> it's <laughs> contemplation time. It's a universal isolation. It's where you go sit in the corner and suck your thumb or stick it up your ass and say, oh, my God, please come save me. Well, you're talking to yourself. The whole fucking time, you know, we've moved into that. That's why everything that got us to where we are and what she talked about with being attached to the story. The story is not just the trauma. OK, I've told people many times you don't even want to know where I've been. OK, you don't even want to know. But you know what? The same for everybody. Everybody has these parts of them that they fucking lie about, that they don't want to talk about. And let me tell you something. Not saying it is a lie. OK, it's just another way of avoiding it. We own all of this stuff. So all I'm trying to say is we've gotten to a point now where the magic is in the now. And it's not from the old math pre 2020, let's say, where one plus one equals two. No, it's like one plus one equals three and three plus three equals like some like 81 and 81 plus 81 equals like something like, you know, 18,000. And it just grows expansively, exponentially. And this is the power of what we're doing. We're transforming this duality into the age of the Trinity, which is when two or more come together and you create a, a third energy, yeah. an energy that's like non-physical. And it goes forever. And, it, and it, is, it is dictated by the originators and by anyone that buys into it and where their frequency is at the core. So it, that's going back to what you said earlier, too, is whatever we're doing is having effects across all timelines, dimensions, galaxies, solar systems, multiverses, new universes. It's affecting everything. We are the universal correction. This is the trip, man. This is the glory. This is the opportunity that we have. I am soul, and the human is the hero. And the human is the hero because we're here all the time, you know. We got to own this thing. We've got to embody this thing. The last thing I'm going to say, I was walking on the beach last night, and I thought I actually posted this. <laughs> and I woke up this morning and it wasn't there. You know when you do that? You know, you're like, oh, my God, that was so badass. So people are going to like it. And I'm like, where is it? Well, I didn't do it. But I started thinking about sacred union. Now, I'm speaking energetically, whether it's within ourselves, although I do think that the externalization 
of our manifestation and creative abilities is a big, big part of what we're doing. We're actually taking all that non-physical, etherical stuff into the physical and creating a fantastic, by human standards, supernatural environment, okay? But I started thinking about sacred union, divine union, and I thought, you know what it really is? You know what sacred union really is? It's when the higher self and the higher self, when you can look in the ethers and you can see the unconditional love, courage, trust, open-mindedness, boom, all that stuff. You can see what they got. And it's bringing that into the flesh. Yes. Okay? That's what it yes, is. It's it bringing is. that into the flesh. It and it's is. not this fluffy, love and light shit, yes. twin flame and all that crap. It's work. It takes honesty. It's the brutal honesty of the soul with yourself. And I don't care if you have a partner or not. I don't care. You know, it has to do with yourself. And, and that's, that's the whole gig for all of us, you know. So, you know, to thine own self be true. Keep your own counsel. In the end, not only make your own decisions in, in all regards, but have the balls to take responsibility for each and everything you do and let's stop pointing fucking fingers at each other right. because that is not going to be the, well, let me put it another way, and I'm going to pass it back to her. I was told eight years ago, whatever you do, whatever you get into, it's only going to expand if you do something new. If you do anything right. that's been done before, if you go into the stereotypical interactions of our old codependent toxic fucking relationships you're not going to get there all you're going to do is go oh we're not doing it because of you or we're not doing it because of you well you know what fuck that shit it's time to do something new each and every day moment by moment period in the story the truth speaks the truth is all there is there is no right or wrong stop pointing fingers at the illuminati stop yeah, pointing fingers at the business. everything it's the shit that's going on this is the isness so. You take it. Oh, okay. Um, what did I want to, oh, I wanted to get this guy rolling by on a mattress. Looks like a good time. Um, <laughs> there's an isness to this. There's an absolute. Like there's there's an overall what we're here to do, and that's to be creators. We are the seventh root race. We are the Pangaean. Pan meaning uh, from the ancient Greek meaning all. Okay, and Pan was the it was the is the myth the mythological f uh, figure of the wild, right? Uh, Disney turned it, but uh, it is about embracing the all, the wild that there is with a, within us all. Okay, because we are the, we are the divine. Her her omnipresence. Her well, it's a it's an androgynous sentient being, but we are the feminine energy that's rising back up, right, within our souls, within our soul self, and we are to embody it. Not to say that you don't have like a a sacred uh, partner, divine union. That you know, you do. You you play. You you made a beautiful blueprint for your life. Are you going to align with it? That's that's the question. You know. Can you align with it? Or do you make new choices? Or do you stay in, in the circles and in, in the patterns and keep repeating, right? But that's not what we're here for. The next seven years are really about the unfolding of your, your wholeness in reality and, and playing it and living it and being the embodiment of that wholeness and, and however that shows up for you is beautiful and it doesn't be like you know like Todd or like myself or like your your best friend that you talk to on the internet or whatever you don't have to you don't have the same stories you don't even have to have the same the same creations you don't need to be in the same timelines we're here to embody our our own perspective create our own timeline so that we are walking in a, a multi-dimensional reality in the higher densities called Tara. Okay, Earth is the lower three chakras. Tara is the, the second set of chakras. So it's the fourth, fifth, and sixth. That's the energy of Tara. And then Gaia is the seventh, eighth, and ninth energy. Okay, so Gaia would be the, the, the omnipresence of this, of this earthly realm. Okay that that name but we're in tara we're in the energy of tara and we're here to bring this this beauty and not to say like i do want to make it a point though um in the past here i'm going to talk about the future but in the past when we were in lower dense frequencies that is the that is the energy that was th that was radio frequency tapped by the the 
fallen angelics. Okay. So when, when they spoke about in, in, in the ancient text about, you know, Mary or Jesus or Buddha, Krishna's or any of the deities or in, in even coming in, it wasn't that they were false light. Then it, we, we, we went through, we've gone through hundreds of thousands of years of galactic war with these, with these celestial beings that no longer create their own quantum. So they've been, you know, working together and fighting with each other to gain the control of the population of the radial frequencies and lower density earth. So the lower three chakras, we're, we're not in that anymore. We're, we're in the higher densities. And it's not to say that, you know, you can't channel or that you're not having a divine being in your presence, but it is to understand, like Todd said, that that divine being is you. It is you in whatever form it's showing up as it's you. If it needed to come in as a, as a form of a cuddly, beautiful, angelic butterfly being that landed and singing Ooh, all softly and subtly, that's because that's what you can resonate with right, right now without climbing out of your chair. Go, Oh my God, what just, oh, light just came in and scared the shit out of me. You know, that's not, you know, I, I have that myself. I get out close to the ocean and I can feel the, the presence of my, my celestial, my celestial self coming through and my, my, my Syrian self coming through and it gets really intense. I'm like, Oh my God, that's so much, that's so much, that's so much. I'm not ready. I'm not ready. You know, and I'll do that. And I'm honest about it. You know, I'm not ready to see, I, I would be like, Holy, what just, what just showed up? I mean, I grew up in the desert, like where the hills have eyes and they have eyes, you know? So and I, I, and I, I see things. I'm very sentient. I'm very you know, connected to the earth. And like, I see things, I'm a seer in the physical, tangible reality. I have that ability. We all do, but I have it attunedly turned on and I know that. So it scares me. It's, and so whenever you have these beings show up and they're light and they're soft and they're fluffy, it's, be, it, it's not, be, it, it, it's that presence, that, that essence of you that you can handle seeing in that moment. If it's just an orb, you know, like a, a light orb that it's you, it's always going to be you or your soul family or your celestial family, which is you. We're all one. It's a consciousness stream. It's a radio frequency stream. No matter what, it, it you know, even if it, it does show itself in a in a tangible form, you are it. I am that. That I am, the all. So I agree with Todd. You know, and this is a perfect divine plan. I didn't explain this, but earlier when I was talking about the dissension of Gaia's consciousness into the physical form, the seventh root race is the physical form. Okay, that is the completion of Gaia descending her consciousness onto this planet, the fall, okay, her falling from grace. So there was nothing undivine about it. Everything that has played out has played out in divine perfection. All timelines, all destruction, all, I mean, we've had, we've had a collective ability to change it as it says in the, the what is the Bible code, you know, it, will you change this? Collectively, will you change this event based on your consciousness and the collective consciousness? Can you, will you change these events? So it, everything has been perfect in the quantum, in the quantum perspective. Everything is perfect and in the divine plan. She's an omnipresent being. Even if this, this planet does explode and go back, it, it turns into space dust. She's going to reincarnate as a solar system in a non-duality -dual, universe. That's her ascending again to the next level. You as a soul, billion, trillion years old, you know, you you going into you you you're going through a journey to become a sentient being if you're not already one embodied into this this a, a human avatar right now okay but you're in a progress of becoming a, your own universe your own solar logos so you're in a process of ascension a soul ascension you know and so so is she she doesn't change he she the sentient being gaia this universe milky way it it, it is an ascension nonetheless you know, that's going to move to the next level. Everything is divine perfection. The only thing that sucks if you turn into space dust and you like you, you're fractaled out into any itsy bitsy little core pieces that, and you no longer create your own quantum. If your quantum is completely absorbed, like sucked out of your body, like what the dark agenda is attending to do from a lot of people that are, you know, giving their free will to go to this harvesting new earth, phantom earth, whatever. But that energy, like, that quantum, when it burns out, you no longer create your own quantum because you're not living from light, from the Christos, right? The light. If you're not living from the light, that's whenever your quantum start, stops creating quantum and you're just left with what is in your body. 
and it will not recreate. And that's whenever you'll be absorbed back into source consciousness and you'll be reborn as an atom, but you won't have the cellular memory that you had as a soul from all of the other, you know, maybe hundreds of trillions of freaking incarnations from before. So it's not to say that you are going to die and you'll never be a being again. That's not true at all. You're, 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 you're present. You're an infinite being infinite possibilities and even then if you do this it's another life lesson so what you're you're infinite you know go back into source and try it again <laughs> but that's you know that's what we're we're working with here and there there is a fact that it is about moving on with your your story and creating a new one what's your not next chapter in the next seven years that we're here, you know, until 2027, we have more events that are going to unfold, you know, astrological events, okay, but that are unfolding. You know, we have seven years of, of getting to know who you are and what does that look like? What is your reality going to look like with no karma, no karmic attachments, with, with a higher vibration? What do you want it to be? So that's why it's so important to drop that old reality, to drop those old stories, to step into your truth to be the Christos, to be the light. And it doesn't mean that you have to run around and, and be in like a state of home, like so you're sitting on a, you know, on a mountain all the time. No, you're a, a, a being. You can laugh. You can have sex. You can smoke a joint. You can have a drink. You can live your life, you know, but live it consciously. Live it with devotion. Live it with purpose. Live it with passion. So, on that. Mm. That's excellent. That was excellent. That's excellent. I don't have anything else to say. Uh, the only thing I was going to say is, uh, and I think it, it was said a couple times by both of us or alluded to, you know, anything that comes into your field is you. You can, it's you. I mean, we know in the end, oneness is oneness. There is no in between. There is no middle ground. But these experiences that we were having, you know, whether it be Todd eight years ago and Jesus appeared in the trees, you know, and uh, that was me, okay? And like she said earlier, it comes to us in a way that we can actually process it and not have our mind fried. You know, if I look at my own example, eight years ago, it was, it was Yeshua, Magdalene, the six biblical prophets, ascended uh, three spirit guides from what we call past lives. But that's the way I could handle it then. I, I wouldn't have been able to handle galactics, you know, at the time. We're all different. We're all coming from different places. And just remember, though, if you're, ch if you're channeling, you know, or you're downloading, you're, you, this is you, you know. Now, it could be something that uh, has, you know, that's something that you don't understand what it really is or whatever the case is. But in the end, it's you. It's being put in front of you for a reason. There's a reason it's being put in front of you. It has a message for you. And I still think that our greatest opportunities come from human interactions. I personally revisit as much as possible the people that piss me off, okay? The people that, that, that slight me, you know? <clears throat> the people that say stuff behind my back. And I go there, and I accept their friend requests when they unfriend me, and then they refriend me, then they unfriend me, and they refriend me. And then I say, well, I thought we were friends. Oh, I don't know what happened. Uh, you know, I thought you did it. You know, I mean, That's I'm not. Bullshit. Yeah, yeah, it is bullshit. And I think we're getting to a point now, you know, Mrs. Blunt over here. <laughs> I think we're getting to a point now where I fucking love you. So you know what? I'm going to tell you the truth. And, 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 and don't crucify me for doing it because I'm actually trying to do the best thing. Now, I could be wrong. I could be shadowed. I could be talking out my ass. But if, but if, you're, if, if bullshit comes at me, I'm sorry. I am in the ascension. I'm trying to expand. And I think it's incumbent upon me and everyone else now to say that's fucking bullshit. Okay? Uh, clue me in, like she said a while ago, I'll be the first one. Clue me in. But you know what? I'm not going to play these old fucking games anymore. Okay? I owe that to myself and all the mirrors that I'm looking at. You know? So, you know, I mean, I just wish everybody peace, power, protection, and big-ass fucking love. And that means from yourself. That doesn't mean, no, I don't even believe in protection. What the hell is that? Well, I don't need protection. I am, I am my own field. You are. And if something comes in my field, 
I might have, you know, to go this way or go that way, but ultimately I can table it, but ultimately I'm going to have to deal with that, whatever that is, you know, and, and I have been filleted and laid out on a table and sodomized by the devil and all his minions and all this other stuff. And it's happened. Okay. And it was very real to me, but I also realized that was a beautiful gift. That was a beautiful well to come out of, you know, I was a little sore and it was hard to walk the next day, but you know, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Listen, I'm going to hand it over to her and let her close the show out. Tell us where, by the way, tell us where we can find you. And when you get a chance after the show's over, make sure you put your links uh, in the comments uh, and let people know what you do as far as energy practitioner, anything like that, or how they can get in touch with you locally or online. And that's pretty much it. <laughs> All right. Uh, again, my yeah, I have platforms: Facebook, Instagram, and uh, YouTube. My YouTube channel, and that's Corky Cosmo. Uh, all of them, all of the above. Uh, I'm most frequent on Instagram, and everything else that I do on Instagram just automatically goes to Facebook. Um, I've had a uh, run with Facebook one too many times, so I was just like, I'm out. Um, <laughs> and I, I hang out on Instagram land and on YouTube. Um, so. Again, it's Corky Cosmo, Q U I R K Y Cosmo, C O S M O, and that that's you have my links and all my links are in uh, on those pages on the social media pages. I don't have a website or anything up right now. I am working on that. I have been working on that for about a year. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> I just it's always changing. I'm like I don't know, but uh, what I do is I'm a multidimensional celestial healer. So I work with Gene Keys, which is the genetic uh, imprint based on celestial alignments. It's natal, but it's with, more with the psychology. And I bring in like the etherics, and um, I bring in spirit messages and I align you to the highest vibration. I use celestial sound alchemy. People call it light language. It's celestial sound alchemy. Um, it's the oldest tone that's a frequency and that it is the Emerald Covenant um, on a Sazi language. So if you're, it's a more tribal, um, energetic frequency and it basically shatters these overlays that are locking your consciousness within your DNA and it activates cellular memory. So whenever you're hearing my light language, it'll activate cellular memory within your body and it'll cause either physical or emotional um, or mental uh, transfiguration, which will send out and you know, it's a domino effect within your DNA and then your DNA starts to restructure. It's all d between the two of, you know, us, it's an us event. So with, permission from your higher self and everything like that. That's how it works. Um, I do the celestial sound alchemy on groups and we did some last night. We did a, an activation in the dragon lines, which is the volcanic ley lines that run in between the earth. And we were clearing out the ancient uh, lineage is what we were doing last night at the other there at the Australian pine on Siesta Key, the only tree on the beach at that. So um, on this note, I'm going to close out and I am grateful. Thank you, Todd, for having me on this very much my bluntness we did well we did so well <laughs> so well <laughs> and uh, I'll do a, a little light language um, a tr a transmission uh, again this is my higher source self calling in all celestial aspects of self source self high my higher source self source itself and elemental spiritual um, energies and lineage to be present to hold space for this transmission for the activation for the igniting of the genetic memory within your cellular structure to bring it to the highest frequency in this now moment in this present reality past and future okay all timeline space dimensions on planet and off with that as a divine sovereign being that is my will and so it is and in this moment, take a deep breath and on exhale, say, ah. ah. Sum pugwar na e e an he, ukus tu tu amar na ane i ti itis rane yak. Tu anhar na se e an anar na tin, kum pura mahana e a ta arras tishtian, kum purup muna ana e a na satar, nikni ar nisiti su.
sar nak nean un gnuer na satain kin tisin tin arnate kumba ana nak nak tian duara nanai ku satane si tistar na manai si Sampar natin, kumpumparan natin ay astatar natin, suntuan anar na ni ea, sinitistar natin, kimwara, siyo. As a divine source light, that is my will, and so it is. All right. And so it is. Wishing everybody peace, power, protection, big love. Thank you so much, Quirky Cosmo. We're going to do some more stuff together. Sure. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So we're going to uh, continue to collaborate and bring in more people. We're going to have a couple of uh, uh, soul gatherings over the next two months in Florida, by the way. So just keep your eyes open. And uh, we'll see what the next broadcast is going to be. We're not scheduling anything because we're kind of in a, a state of flux, but I'm going to try to do one or two broadcasts every day. Peace out. Oh, what do I need to turn off? This one. Did it end? It's not ending. It doesn't want to end. It's not. No, there it oh, goes. There it <laughs> if you're in this time now, you're able to choose. It. You'll be able to choose. See, I don't use this normally. Okay. So, end.